Well, first up, the unified fabric. Why we're so excited about this? Well, I'll tell you why we are excited about it. It really does have to do with scale, okay? Obviously, when you talk data center technologies, you want to be able to go from a very small shop to perhaps something the size of Google, right? You want to be able to make that transition should your business really take off and you need to be able to scale incredibly when it comes to vast amount of datas, uh, data that you might be responsible for. So scalability is huge and we'll be talking about that in the course. Convergence, wire once for both the LAN and the SAN as we've already alluded to. Being able to use devices that can access both LAN information and SAN information without having to reinvest or have two devices in place, one for each of those functions. Intelligence. What do we mean by intelligence? Well, here's what we mean by this. As you know, servers are being virtualized, right? Virtualized servers is the craze. Well, what we want all of this equipment to be able to do is recognize those VMs. Yeah, we may have 12 virtual machines on a server blade from Cisco, and we want intelligence. We want to be able to identify each of those different VMs and potentially treat those VMs with particular network policy. This is one of the things that we lost, right, when we moved to this virtualized world. Yeah, for a while, we didn't have technologies that would allow us to identify the traffic of one VM from another. So we were having all of this server traffic slammed into this one pipe. It was great that it was virtualized, but we lost a lot of control. We lost a lot of policy that we could enact on this traffic when that happened. And the other one here is security. Yeah, just because we are moving into this unified fabric environment, we got to make sure that we can still do this securely. And as you know, security is one of my key areas. So we'll be talking a lot about security as we move throughout this course. So unified fabric, if we were to sum it up, this is kind of like the sales brochure, just in case you weren't already sold on this. It's going to be simple for us to implement. It's going to scale. It's going to give us great high performance. It's going to be highly available. And there are a wide variety of deployment models for Cisco data center technologies. That's another thing that I love about this area of networking. There are a whole bunch of different ways we can go about implementing this. When I teach the UCS class here, a lot of students will say to me, well, why are you even talking about rack mounted servers? We have blade servers now in a UCS chassis and that's far superior. Well, look, not every organization may be able to make that investment in a UCS chassis with all those various blade servers. So there needs to be great flexibility in how we get started. There needs to be a bunch of different architectures, which there are, as I will show you, there need to be a whole bunch of different products to be able to implement solutions like this that will literally fit the size of the organization and will address the business needs of the organization in a head-on manner. Now, what are aspects of the unified fabric solution? Well, we have these fabric extenders for the top of our racks, okay? So we have a rack of, let's say, uh, rack-mounted servers, right? At the top of that rack, we have this Cisco fabric extender that's going to allow great, redundant, high-speed LAN and SAN connectivity to the rest of the infrastructure. We want our adapters and our VMs to be tied right into this system, right? This has to do with a VM running on one of these blades 
and us being able to recognize that virtual machine traffic as it goes into the rest of our infrastructure. Second down here, we need real high speed, don't we? We need 40 to 100 gigabit per second ports to handle the raw bandwidth needs that we are gonna face in the modern data center. And then, you know what else we wanna do? Step three here, or area number three, we want to eliminate spanning tree protocol. Yeah, we are gonna be picking on spanning tree protocol a lot in this course, and things like virtual port channels and Cisco fabric path are going to render spanning tree protocol unnecessary in our organization. That's right, we're gonna make sure that all links in a redundant topology, we're gonna to make sure all links are active and forwarding traffic with these technologies. Number four area here is virtual device contexts. That's right, we wanna be able to go into the data center and we wanna be able to partition these devices for particular segments, uh, branches. If we're an internet service provider, right, we wanna be able to partition equipment for particular customers. So we're gonna have all of the devices being able to be virtualized within themselves, and this is a great feature. And then we're gonna talk about overlay transport virtualization and Cisco DMM in order to simplify multiple data center environments. Notice we have data center two and data center three here, which are geographically separate entities, and we'll talk about Cisco technologies that'll make it easy to manage and to move traffic from multiple data centers to each other. Now, some key building blocks of the unified fabric uh, would certainly be the links themselves, right? Now, I want to impress upon you, when we talk about the links in our Cisco data center, we're talking about two different types. Remember I said the information, uh, the, the icons that we had in this course that would be in blue, that dealt with LAN equipment. And then the pretty green icons would deal with our storage area network equipment. Understand that we can have converged and dedicated links in our infrastructure. Sure, so this orange link right here, we can see going from this particular uh, array of storage area networking equipment, this is a dedicated SAN link going into a storage area network piece of equipment from Cisco Systems. Notice that this link right here is a converged link where we are having both the SAN and the LAN traffic be transmitted thanks to technologies like fiber channel over ethernet. So in our infrastructure, at any point of our data center, we can have both dedicated links as well as converged links, links that might be carrying just the SAN traffic versus links that might be carrying the SAN and the LAN traffic. Another key building block technology that we have in the Cisco data center is the CNA. Yeah, the CNA. What is the CNA? This is the converged network adapter. Yeah, so anytime we see this acronym in this course, remember we're talking about an adapter that can do the NIC functions for the local area network and the host bus adapter functions for the storage area network. This obviously is a key ingredient for our fiber channel over ethernet technologies. And this card, this converged network adapter needs to be able to do some pretty fancy things like priority flow control and data center bridging and fiber channel over ethernet initialization protocol or FIP. These technologies allow fiber channel over ethernet to work the way we would want it to work in our network infrastructure. So we are very reliant here on some very advanced converged network adapter technologies in our data center today. 
What are some other technologies? I mean, I, I alluded to them briefly already, but let's just see a lineup of them. And believe me, you will become very, very proficient in these various areas. That fabric path technology, which allows us to eliminate a reliance on spanning tree protocol. Overlay transport virtualization for joining different data centers together in one layer two domain. FEX link technology for, again, extending this virtual machine concept all the way through our network infrastructure. VN tagging, once again, to take a virtual machine and to be able to identify it as it moves its traffic through the data center. Data center bridging in fiber channel over Ethernet and virtual port channeling, again, a technology that I'll teach you all about, and the idea behind it is to stop spanning tree protocol from blocking key links within our infrastructure.